Okay, so now listen. See, all the zoology people always remember what exactly I am saying. See, in case of uh, zoology, friends, uh, what are the most important units for us? In case of zoology, which will help us to score more when compared to the other people. Every student uh, listen my words very correctly. When compared to the other friends, uh, you know, immunology chapter, then genetics chapter, molecular biology, human physiology, biochemistry, evolution, developmental biology. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is 7 subunits or the 7 units are very, very important. So, if you are answering all the questions from this particular 7 units, it will help you a lot when compared to the other aspirants. See, most of the people who are preparing for the zoology category, mostly they will only focus on the car data and non-car data. Then they will also focus a little bit about human physiology chapter. Is it? So friends, if you do only this much, it is not at all sufficient. Right? See, because everyone will read these things. So I want you to focus on these tough chapters which others cannot score. So among all those, one of the toughest chapter is what? Immunology. Everyone, please mute your mics. Don't create any disturbance. Okay? Yeah. So now, why immunology is a tough? What is the reason? The reason is that immunology is a very broad concept. I can tell to every student, immunology is a purely conceptual. What friends? What I can tell you? Immunology is a purely conceptual. And the second point, you can expect a kind of a logical or are analytical questions from the chapter of immunology. So that is the reason only friends we can say that immunology is a very important and scoring and difficult chapter also. Why it is very difficult? The reason, please, please mute your mics. Please mute your mics. Please don't allow me to say this many number of times. Sangeeta, mute your mic quickly. Okay. So now listen. So what protects us from the pathogens? Now listen everyone. Okay. In the immunology chapter, what we all people has to study according to your syllabus. According to your syllabus, we all people has to, your syllabus is very small. Actually, when compared to the, Sangeeta, please mute your mic. Right. So when compared to the uh, set and net syllabus, your syllabus is very small syllabus. Why? Because in your syllabus, it is only cells of the immune system. Then primary and secondary lymphoid organs and the third and most important one about the MHC complexes and the fourth one about antigen antibody interactions. This is extremely important. Undoubtedly, you can get the question, right? And the differences between the innate immune system as well as the adaptive immune system. And you have to study very briefly and elaboratively about B lymphocyte as well as the T lymphocytes also, right? So everyone, Sunita, please mute your mic. So only these concepts we have to read in the chapter of immunology. Of course, your syllabus is a very little syllabus only. But the point is that, friends, the level of understanding immunology is very difficult. Okay. So I will try my best to explain to all of you to understand the immunology very easily. Right. Okay. So now listen, what protects us from pathogens? Every student listen my statements very correctly. What protects us from pathogen? See friends, pathogen means, just give me one moment of time.
okay what protects us from the pathogen so a simple answer is what friends undoubtedly the immune system is going to protect us from the pathogen so all the students listen whether say listen to me for 30 minutes continuously it is really interesting whether it is a bacteria virus a fungi toxin pollution parasite whatever it may be friends whatever that is entering all the students listen to me correctly our body will be protecting against all these with the help of immune system. So friends, before understanding the immune system, all the students try to remember one very important point. You have to remember the simple definitions. What is immune? What is immunity? What is immunology? What is immune system? And what is immune response? Trust me, if you don't understand all these definitions, right, you can't understand the immune system. So anyway, I will explain to all of you very briefly and elaboratively. Just listen to me very carefully. What is immune? You know, right, in our general language, we use that, that particular person having the highest immunity, that particular person can sustain to any infection and we say that bacteria are immune to the antibiotics so friends you only see the definition immune means natural or are acquired resistance to a particular disease not to get confused so a particular person is a power immune or resisted towards the disease naturally also or acquired also Acquired means what? Suppose example, you have taken a vaccine. So now you become very powerful or resist towards that particular corona vaccine, or I mean to say coronavirus. So what we can say that immune will be either natural or the acquired resistance to a disease. Not to get confused with this particular point. And the second one is called as immunity. Every student remember my words. What is immunity? Remember the simple definition because they are very important. Immunity refers to a state of acquired or innate resistance or a protection from a pathogenic microorganism or its product. What do you mean by that? Friends, understand. Suppose example, friends, a bacteria entered in our body. You tell me, how does the bacteria going to show their action? Bacteria show their action by releasing its antigens. Correct, na? You know very well. Bacteria can release the cell wall. Bacteria can release the DNA. Bacteria can release the protein. Anything bacteria can release. So friends, whenever we become resist to that particular pathogenic organism or are the product released by the pathogenic organism, that is called immunity. Suppose example, if a snake bite occur, everyone keep Keep your mic uh, in the mute ma mute mode. So you know, right? Suppose example, there is a snake bite occurred. So friends, a snake bite contains what? A toxic venom. So if we become resistant to that particular snake venom or the insect venom, that particular state we called immunity. So friends, in a one single line, I can tell you that immunity means the capability of a resistance or in a simple words the state of resistance towards pathogenic organism and the toxic substances released by the pathogenic organism that is called immunity now you understand what is immune you understand what is immunology okay now, what is immunology? Can any one of you quickly answer my question? What is immunology? Who may, whatever the definition you know, just answer it. Everyone of you, give me a common definition. What do you know about the immunology? Okay. Renuka, study of immune system is called as immunology. Okay, good. Anyone else? 
please give me the definition srilata what is the definition of immunology any one of you okay all the students listen of course whatever you said is right see friends immunology is a branch of biomedical science you know what the immunology is explaining us all the students has to understand me how an organism how an organism is acting against an antigen how an organism is acting against the antigen how an organism recognizing between the self antigen and the foreign antigen so studying of that entire process in in the body also in the laboratory also that is what exactly we can called immunology so now all the students listen my statements very correctly without confusion immunology is explaining us how an organism is acting against the antigen and how organism is differentiating between which is the self antigen which is the foreign antigen in the body also in the laboratory also that branch only friends we can called immunology okay and in every slide i am repeatedly saying to all of you our body is going to fight against the pathogenic organism friends how how our body is going to fight against the pathogenic organism every student remember with the help of immune system see friends when i use the word immune system every student remember immune system means it contain lot of immune molecules it contain lot of immune cells it contain lot of immune tissues and it contain lot of immune organs so friends listen all the molecules all the cells all the tissues and all the organ together we call it as immune system so every student remember only one single immune cell cannot fight again is the pathogenic organism so if we want to fight again is the pathogenic organism we require the help of all the molecules all the cells all the tissues all the organs which are associated with the immunity because friends these are all our host defense mechanisms not to get confused with this particular point now every student try to understand me correctly what is immune response every student listen my statements correctly what is immune response this is the most important definition among all if you understand this definition the concept is very clear to all of you see friends i have written one line here what is the line i have written a collective and coordinated response to the introduction of a foreign substance by the cells and molecules of the immune system what do you mean by that friends suppose a bacteria entered inside my body then what happen all the immune molecule all the immune cells all the immune tissues all the immune organs all are coming close together all together showing the response again is to this particular pathogen that is the reason we can called uh, that is called immune response so friends how does the immune response can be occurred there are two steps are involved one is called as recognition sorry one is called as recognition and another one is called response see friends it is very important all the students follow my words correctly what do you mean by the word recognition friends recognizing pathogen where the pathogen entered in our body once we recognize we have to kill it how can we kill it so killing or destructing that particular pathogen neutralizing that particular pathogen that is called response you will understand just focus there are two type of responses are there effect or response memory response friends i will explain to all the students what happens in our body see immunology chapter is not like other chapters friends if you don't understand the first class of immunology you never understand second third fourth fifth any class immunology is always interconnected 
and if you only understand the first class if you don't read the second and third class you never get immunology in order to understand the immunology you have to understand the whole chapter then you will become experts in the immunology because it is interconnected okay first i will explain to all of you what do you mean by the word effect or response every student remember once a foreign organism entered suppose friends this is the bacteria let's consider immediately what happen macrophages will get activated you know it i will show you macrophage get activated so friends macrophage what it will do it will take that particular pathogen inside and what it will do it will start the process of phagocytosis i will explain you in the upcoming slides once it will do the process of phagocytosis it will express the antigen on its surface then which cell come into the picture t helper cell come into the picture then what the t helper cell will do t helper cell will take this particular antigen then t helper cell release certain chemicals what are the name of the chemicals we can call the cytokines so what the cytokines are going to do that particular cytokines will activate the b cell then friends what the b cell will do b cell differentiated into plasma cell memory cell what the plasma cell will do they will secrete antibody what the memory cell will do they will store the antibody so friends this antibody will come and neutralize this pathogen this is what do you called effect or response see the definition you automatically understand once a foreign organism has been recognized immediately what happen the immune system recruits what the immune system is going to recruit a variety of cells immune system is going to recruit a variety of molecule to show a response why it is showing the response to eliminate the pathogen or or to neutralize the pathogen so finally we are destroying the pathogen right so that process only we can called effect or response so friends remember we also stored the copy of antibodies right now you only understand next time next time same pathogen entered next time the same pathogen entered now all the students listen my statements correctly when the next time the same pathogen entered we don't require all these cells we have already stored the antibodies right that antibodies immediately will come and show the response on this antigen that response is called as what memory response you only look into the definition later exposure to the same foreign organism it will activate which response memory response so that memory response directly will come and destroy the pathogen so there are two type of responses effect or response and memory response see i am telling you immunology is a difficult you feel one or two classes very difficult after that you will adjust and you will understand okay now we read all the definitions simple terminologies you have to remember so now every student has to understand from this particular slide so from here every slide is important from every slide we can expect the questions very clearly now remember what are the two type of immunities innate immunity adaptive immunity every student follow me what is innate immunity what is adaptive immunity follow me friends innate immunity means it's a very interesting one it is called first line of defense mechanism you know every student will think that innate immune system will be active when the pathogen enters in our body that is wrong statement innate immune system what it is doing as it never ever allow the entry of pathogen try to understand so so friends name itself indicating right it is a barrier mechanism suppose example you want to enter into the house but if i close the door how can you enter inside you can't enter inside same way friends what the innate immune system is doing it provide barrier mechanism it will provide the doors by that the pathogen never ever enter inside so see the definition it is the first line of defense mechanism shown by the body 
and it relies on mechanisms that exist before infection every student listen it relies on mechanism that exist before infection what do you mean by that before the pathogen enter in our body innate immune system is active it never allow anything inside but you only try to understand so suppose example friends you take a skin skin so friends if there is a no cut on the skin suppose there is a no cut occurred on the skin skin is very healthy do you think skin will allow the pathogen to enter inside it never allow now you people try to understand what i am saying listen everyone adaptive immune system is called as second line of defense mechanism every student remember my words adaptive immune system will be activated whenever innate immune system got failed so friends how can i explain to that how can i explain you suppose friends there is a cut occurred on the skin you tell me friends if there is a cut occurred on the skin do you think you can stop the entry of the pathogenic organism you can't stop why because skin got failed to act like a barrier so friends all the pathogens can easily enter so you only tell me innate immune system is called first line of defense adaptive immune system is called second line of defense and innate immune system always relies on the mechanism that exist before infection before pathogen enter only it will be activated but here it relies on the mechanism that adapt after infection what i mean to say when the pathogen enter in our body then the adaptive immune system will be super activated so you only tell me very 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 important point the third point is all the students try to understand response generated within hours every student understand me correctly response generated within hours what do you mean by that see friends and in the adaptive immune system why i have written that response generated within days can anyone tell me because friends in the innate immune system we are not producing any antibodies but in the adaptive immune system we are producing antibodies so friends production of antibodies always take time lot of time so but here in the innate immune system suppose example inflammation is happening you tell me in order to inflammation to occur do you think it will take days time no inflammation means swelling blood clot it will occur within 3 to 6 minutes only but friends if you want to produce antibodies it will take 4 to 7 days i will tell you one simple example to all the students suppose you you got a common cold see friends common cold actually withstand 4 to 7 days so up to 4 to 7 days common cold cannot be decreased completely but what we people do we can't tolerate the symptoms we will take the tablets and we will try to destroy that particular virus but friends what i am trying to say to all the students our body having the natural immunity our body having the natural immunity to synthesize the antibodies again is the cold virus what is the cold virus rhinovirus but friends it will take time so it will take 4 to 7 days of time to synthesize the antibody so that's why the adaptive immune system the response generated within days and here limited specificity here diverse specificity why because limited specificity it is acting on only that particular area wherever the inflammation occur it is acting only on that particular area then friends when you look into the diverse specificity means here there is a involvement of many cells b cell is involved t cell is involved and different type of t cells are involved different type of b cells involved that's why we can call diverse specificity and most important point among all in case of a innate immune system you can't see any memory why friends because innate immune system you are not producing antibody only friends you are not producing antibody then how can you store the antibody 
you cannot store the antibody so there is a no memory response in the innate immune system but friends in case of a adaptive immune system all the students listen to me correctly there is a memory response why because here antibody is synthesized so antibody is getting stored next time when the pathogen entered antibody will directly go and destroy so wherever antibody is synthesized their memory response will be there compulsory not to get confused with this okay every student please say yes or no is it clear till this particular slide all of you all of you please give the reply all of you i know friends it's not easy topic it's very difficult topic but i want you to understand correctly is it clear everyone every one of you say yes or no others 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 very good very very good very good okay now from this particular slide i want every student has to answer me okay so from here 99.99% you can expect the question that is from the cells of the immune system i am requesting everyone just pay a super attention from here okay the first one uh, uh renuka please answer my question where all the immune cells can be synthesized every one of you varaprasad venu srinivas where saidulu sujata my question is where immune cells are synthesized in our body very good so immune cells are actually synthesized where in case of the bone marrow okay every student has given the answer as bone marrow that is true but let me tell you one very important point every student please listen my words please listen see friends uh, someone said what someone said what redmi 9 said that bone marrow and thymus all the students listen whatever you said is right but friends you can't say bone marrow is the primary site all the students has to understand it's very interesting point before the bone marrow lymph node spleen tonsils in all these areas also immune cells can be synthesized what i am trying to say to, uh, say the statement is or oh, radhika okay every student listen my statements before 3 months of birth every one of you listen before 3 months of birth and till the end of life until end of life bone marrow is the site where the all immune cells can be synthesized so i am talking 3 months before birth then before this before this lymphatic system in the lymphatic system also immune cells can be synthesized only from 3 months before the birth only bone marrow is the area will become major area for the synthesis of immune cells not to get confused with that every student remember i have written a word bone marrow is also called as hematopoietic stem cell you have to ask me what do you mean by the word hematopoietic stem cell poietic production heme blood cells so the production of the blood cells by a specific cell we can called hematopoietic cell so bone marrow is the region where all the blood cells are getting produced so all the students listen this is the most important slide for the exam the bone marrow is going to give rise to different type of progenitor cells Pro see my friends listen progenitor cell will give rise to precursor cell finally precursor cell will give rise to the final cell you can understand just listen so bone marrow going to give rise to common lymphoid progenitor it is going to give rise to common myeloid progenitor it is going to give rise to erythroid progenitor i will explain in a simple words all the students follow me erythroid progenitor friends sir, what do you mean by the word erythroid progenitor which is going to give rise to megakaryocyte and erythroblast 
what is mega karyocyte you all people studied in the 12th stand also mega large karyo nucleus site cell so the cell which is having the larger nucleus nothing but what mega karyocyte is giving rise to platelet what about erythroblast erythroblast is going to give rise to what erythroblast is going to give rise to erythrocyte very very simple point it is all the students follow me please don't get confused erythroid progenitor give rise to platelets and rbc red blood cell and everyone remember bone marrow also going to give rise to what lymphoid progenitor myeloid progenitor so friends among all the most important for the exam point of view is the lymphoid progenitor only that is b lymphocyte t lymphocyte see friends what are the types of b lymphocytes every student remember b lymphocyte differentiated into plasma cell memory cell plasma cell is going to give rise to antibody memory cell is going to store the antibody simple point so friends very good sudhakar correct and what are the type of t cells this is also extremely important every student listen i will tell you in the upcoming slides elaboratively this is just introduction class we have to read extremely depth of the immunology so t cell divided into different types what are those it is divided into t helper cell i will explain in the upcoming slides t cytotoxic cell t s t suppressor cell these three are the three major type of the t cells what are those t helper t cytotoxic t suppressor b cell is going to give rise to plasma cell memory cell and friends so lymphoid progenitor is going to give rise to b lymphocyte t lymphocyte not only these two don't get confused lymphoid progenitor only going to give rise to the natural killer cell also so in the syllabus also they have specifically mentioned about the natural killer cells we have to read it elaboratively it's very easy to understand so lymphoid progenitor giving rise to total three cells and the most important one myeloid progenitor all the students please listen to me correctly it's also very important one myeloid progenitor friends it is going to give rise to neutrophil eosinophil basophil not only that it is also going to give rise to the dendritic cell friends let me tell you one very interesting point to all of you you know right mast cell i will explain in the upcoming slides elaboratively you know right mast cells plays a crucial role in the allergic response friends till today till today we did not understand which precursor is going to give rise to the mast cell we have not understood this mechanism so they can ask the question in the exam which of the following immune cell derived from unknown precursor what is the question which of the following immune cell will be derived from unknown precursor which is the mast cell not to get confused with that particular point and most of the students will get lot of confusion between the monocyte and macrophage friends please listen to me very correctly actually monocyte and macrophage both are same so then what is the difference whenever it is in the blood circulation whenever it is it is present in the blood circulation you called it monocyte so from the blood whenever it is entered into the tissue then we called it as what friends uh, macrophages so when the monocytes uh, entered into the tissue they get uh, modified they get differentiated they get specialized into macrophages there are different type of macrophages are there i will explain to all of you so remember this particular slide now i am going to explain you one by one cell very briefly and very very elaboratively in the immunology friends we don't study anything about erythrocyte erythrocyte or rbc where we will study we will study in the human physiology chapter under the blood circulation concept under the blood circulation concept we have to study them very briefly and elaboratively here 
you all people has to focus majorly on the WBC. Okay, try to understand. So now the first one I am talking here is the lymphocytes. Remember everyone. So first point every student has to remember for the exam point of view. If you take bone marrow as the 100%, every student follow me. If you take the entire bone marrow as a 100%, friends, 20 to 40 percent of the entire bone marrow is consist of lymphocytes only not to get confused with that particular point and very important and interesting question what is the question i told you that you all people answered that lymphocytes are differentiated into b lymphocyte t lymphocyte and natural killer cell correct na friends remember everyone how did we classify it how did we classify lymphocyte into three types? That is the question. Very important question. Based on the surface markers. Means based on the receptors present on the membrane. Most importantly, most, most importantly, based on the functions performed by them. Very good, Sri Lata. Very good. Based on the receptor, which we also call surface markers. And followed by the functions performed by them we categorized into multiple types right so now all the students listen i will explain one by one see friends it is just an introductory class only where we are going to read all the cells of immune system we are not at all started very depth but trust me from the cells of immune system only you can expect two to three questions very surely now i will tell what kind of questions also we can expect so listen so let's talk about B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. Okay, all the students remember. Let me tell you one common difference which every student uh, studying from the plus 12 onwards. B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. Both can be synthesized. Where friends? It is synthesized in the bone marrow. It is also synthesized in the bone marrow. But every student know that uh, B lymphocyte maturation also occurred in the bone marrow only. But you know very well where the T lymphocyte undergo the maturation, it will undergo the maturation in the thymus. I will tell you why in the upcoming slides. It undergo the selection process there. So remember everyone, T lymphocyte only undergo the maturation in the thymus, but it produced in the bone marrow. B lymphocyte production is also in the bone marrow. Maturation is also in the bone marrow, not to get confused with this particular point. All the students listen to me correctly. B and T lymphocytes, every one of you, they are small, non-phagocytic, motile, agranular. Friends, you can expect the questions from this particular statements only. What do you mean by the word non-phagocytic? That is a very important question. Which, tell me Radhika, tell me Renuka. Every one of you answer. Tell me, Srinivas, which are phagocytic cells? Give me the example of phagocytic cells. Sudhakar, which are the examples of phagocytic cells? Every one of you. Very good. Macrophages. And any other examples? Apart from the macrophages, very good. Macrophages, basophils, most important example, dendritic cells. These are all what, friends? No, 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 no. See, uh, Sri Lata, we can't call lysosomes, dear, because lysosome is organal, no? So that cannot called uh, uh, phagocytic cell, okay? It will provide enzymes, that's all. So you can call macrophage, basophil, dendritic cell. So, but do you think B and T lymphocytes can show the process of the phagocytosis? No, that's why we call them as non-phagocytic. And they are motile and they are agranular. What is agranular? Cytoplasm do not contain any granules. What is motile? They can move very easily. So friends, all the students listen. I'm talking about the B lymphocyte first. Every student has to answer my, my question. This is the B lymphocyte. What I have written, see here, I have written naive B lymphocyte. Most of the students will get confusion between the naive and native. In chemistry or whatever, friends, you have to remember, naive means inactive. Very good. So inactive B lymphocyte. And native means what, friends? Active B lymphocyte. 
Now, how the inactive B lymphocyte is getting converted into active B lymphocyte? Okay, every student, please answer my question, all of you. Here, there is an expression of antibody on the B cell. Every one of you, please answer me. What antibody is expressed on the naive B lymphocyte? Every student, what is the name of the antibody that is expressed? Okay, okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Very good, Varaprasad. IgM. See, uh, Srinivas, first IgM will be expressed. Later, IgG will express. First is IgM. You all people know, right? We will study in the antibodies concept. IgM is what? Pentamer. Is it or not? Having five subunits. So, first IgM is expressed on the naive B lymphocyte. In which phase? In which phase? In the G0 phase. Now you have to tell me, is this B lymphocyte is active B lymphocyte? No, not at all. It is inactive B lymphocyte. Why friends? Why it is inactive? Because it is not associated with antigen. That's an interesting statement. That's a very interesting statement. So if once it associated with the antigen, listen everyone, antigen activation will allow this particular B cell to enter into the G1 phase. Every student commonly know that what, what happens in the G1 phase. G1 phase is the preparatory phase for the S phase. You all people commonly know that. So in the G1 phase, this particular cell will start dividing in a continuous manner. Then it will enter, sorry, it will prepare and it will enter into the S phase. In the S phase, DNA get duplicated. Then it immediately entered which phase? G2 phase. See friends, remember, G1 phase is the preparatory phase for the S phase. Then what about the G2 phase? G2 phase is the preparatory phase for what phase? M phase. Every student know in the M phase what is happening? In the M phase, the cell is getting divided. You can see that. In the M phase, the cell is dividing continuously. Friends, when the cell divides continuously, after a certain period of time, it stops the division, it undergoes the differentiation. So finally, the B cell differentiated into plasma cell, memory cell. Plasma cell synthesize the antibody, memory cell store the antibody. Simple concept it is. So first, it is inactive. Upon antigen encountering or upon antigen entry, it will become active. It will prepare in the G1 phase, undergo the replication in the S phase. Once again, prepare in the G2 phase, undergo the division in the M phase. Finally, undergo the process of differentiation. Not to get confused with that particular point. So friends, all the students try to understand what exactly I'm trying to say now. Remember, let's talk about one by one cell elaboratively. B lymphocyte. Every one of you pay attention. Where is the site of maturation of the B lymphocyte? I have already told you that B lymphocytes are matured in the bone marrow. So friends, bone marrow having a other name where in the mammals, you know what is the name? Bursa of Fabriscus. Bursa of Fabriscus, nothing but bone marrow in case of birds. Friends, very important statement for the exam point of view. Every student remember my words. B lymphocyte contain plasma cells, right? Every student remember. Plasma cell, what I told to all of you, it will synthesize the antibody. See friends, every student remember. Whatever the antibodies that are synthesized by the plasma cells, we call it them as secretory antibodies. See, friends, you ought to ask me, what do you mean by the word secretory antibodies? Friends, secretory antibodies means their lifespan is very low. Why, friends? They will be continuously circulating in the blood. What, friends? Secretory antibodies are continuously circulating in the blood. If there is an antigen is present, it will go and destroy the antigen. Suppose, friends, if the antigen is not present, what happens to this particular antibody? That antibody will die within one to two weeks. That's an important statement. The antibody will die within one to two weeks. 
that's why secretory this is the question secretory antibodies having less life span never ever get confused with that point but friends memory b cell all the students listen what is the line i have written here memory b cell means membrane bound antibody what do we call membrane bound antibody so what do you mean by that suppose this is the memory b cell so all the antibodies are attached on the membrane see here they are assist they are associated with the membrane so friends remember whichever associated with the membrane they will withstand for a long time their lifespan is very high because they are having a protection from the membrane but friends secretory antibodies are having less lifespan because they are freely moving in the blood circulation not to get confused now friends what is the difficult question that they can ask you from the b lymphocyte in this particular slide they can ask the question from surface markers this is important friends if you get the tough question you are going to get from here only and if you want to understand this you have to understand the t lymphocyte also otherwise you can't understand only so on the b lymphocyte there are many surface markers are there one of the surface marker is called cd45 what is the function of this particular cd45 it is involved in the signal transduction means it is involved in passing the information till the nucleus level and most 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 important the c uh, b lymphocyte contain mhc class 2 molecule see you know right major histocompatibility protein what is the function of mhc this is the one trap the antigen sorry it is the one present the antigen once antigen present on the mhc then only t helper cell will come into the picture so friends on the b lymphocyte there is a presence of mhc class 2 molecule not only that on the b lymphocyte there are complement receptors also there we will discuss the complement system separately complement receptor 1 complement receptor 2 and friends every student remember my words remember my words just now i told you that b lymphocyte is the one give rise to plasma cell memory cell plasma cell is the one which synthesize the antibody every student remember my words b lymphocyte never ever synthesize the antibody without the support of the t lymphocyte this is a very important statement friends if there is a no t lymphocyte it is impossible for the b lymphocyte to synthesize the antibody that's a very important one now the question is friends b lymphocyte and t lymphocyte has to associated with each other all the time how how they will be associated every student remember on the b lymphocyte there is a receptor is present it is called b7 receptor there is another receptor called cd40 receptor this is the direct question they can ask you in the exam with the help of b7 and cd40 b cell associated with the t lymphocyte friends please don't confuse with this it's a very important one okay that is what introduction about b lymphocyte it's just introduction so now listen t lymphocyte very very important this is also remember everyone where the t lymphocyte is getting synthesized in the bone marrow where it is getting matured it is getting matured in the thymus so friends once again what kind of surface markers are present on the t lymphocyte cd28 cd45 friends listen i told to all of you b lymphocyte also contain cd45 yes t lymphocyte also contain cd45 there is a no difference at all friends the most important point just now i told you here how the b lymphocyte is connecting with the t lymphocyte with the help of b7 every student remember this is b lymphocyte this is a t lymphocyte b lymphocyte contains what surface marker b7 and t lymphocyte having what surface marker cd28 so friends cd28 
and B7 associated with each other, then only friends, the strong interaction will be established. And which is, they can also ask the question in the exam. What question they can ask in the exam, which is the most common receptor for the B and T lymphocyte? Remember everyone, which is the CD45, which is involved in the process of signal transduction, not to get confused with that. Now, what are the three different types of the T lymphocyte? Friends, 90% of the cases, you are going to get the question from here. T helper cell, T cytotoxic cell, T suppressor cell. I am asking you one simple question to all the students. You have to tell me. HIV virus attack on which surface marker and which cells? What is the target of HIV cells? Sorry, HIV virus. Which cells can be destructed by the HIV virus? No, no, no. Not T lymphocyte. Wonderful. Very, very good. Very good. Very, very good. It is called CD4. Not to confuse friends. HIV virus always attack on the T helper cell. Never, never confuse. And especially what it is attacking on the T helper cell, especially CD4. I will explain you in the next class. Just listen. How do you confirm whether the person is in the condition of a HIV condition or the person is entered into the AIDS condition? It is decided based on the number of CD4 cells only. Based on the count of CD4 number only, we will decide not to get confused, not to get confused. Now, friends, I am telling you one very interesting point. This is B lymphocyte. If you want to activate the B lymphocyte, compulsory T lymphocyte is required. T helper cell is required. But friends, how does the T helper cell is activated? That is the question. This is what, this is the macrophase. I will tell you in the next slides. What the macrophage will do? Macrophage will do the phagocytosis. And it will present the antigen. Where it will present the antigen? On the MHC. Every student has to follow me. What MHC it is? It is called class 2 MHC. So friends, how does the T helper cell will take this particular antigen present on the class 2 MHC? With the help of CD4 glycoprotein. This is the question asked in the exam. T helper cell with the help of CD4, it is always associated with the class 2 MHC molecule. Never ever get confused with this particular point. Then only the T helper cell get activated, then it activates the B lymphocyte. Not to get confused. But if you look into the cytotoxic T cell, this is the cytotoxic T cell. On the surface of the cytotoxic T cell, it is having CD8 surface marker. And it is associated with which kind of MHC? It is associated with a class 1 MHC present on the macrophages or the dendritic cell. Friends, this is the exact questions which we get in the exam. Cytotoxic T cell associated with the CD8 surface marker and class 1 MHC. T helper cell associated with the CD4, never ever get confused, CD4 and class 2 MHC, not to get confused. In the tomorrow class, I will start from this particular slide once again. It's a just introductory class. We have to read extremely depth of the concept. Okay. Is it clear everyone so far? And friends, you can't understand the immunology immediately. Okay. I want you to have a very good patience. When you read till the end, it will become very easy. It is not like a human physiology chapter, just like that you will understand. You require a lot of patience to understand this. No, no, from tomorrow, all the classes will be in the app only. Okay, it is just a first day, no, that's why. Okay. Okay, perfect friends. I will see you against uh, zoology class tomorrow sharp 5 p.m. Okay, that is the cell biology. We will continue it. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Thank you, thank you.